Khevsureti, a land of myths and legends, a region whose inhabitants once guarded the northern borders of the unified kingdom of Georgia. This region was one of the most impenetrable and well-defended fortresses in the Greater Caucasus Mountains. The village of Mutso is a central link in this long chain of fortifications. A defensive complex at 1,900 meters above sea level in the northern part of Khevsureti. After the abolition of the Georgian monarchy at the beginning of the 19th century, Mutso lost its military and defensive function. In the 20th century, after Georgia was incorporated into the Soviet Union, Mutso residents, together with other local Khevsurs, were evicted from their homes. The process of resettlement began in 1956 and continued for almost 25 years. According to the census of 1926, 31 households, or 148 inhabitants, lived in Mutso. In 50 years, Mutso became a deserted, lifeless territory, devoid of its population. This fortified village, without its native inhabitants, was faced with the threat of being wiped from the map completely. Even the one inhabitant who returned to Mutso was unable to stop the houses and towers from falling apart. His return failed to change the fortunes of this dying village. I came back and no one, neither my brother nor my parents, nobody believed that I would stay here. They said I'd stay for one year, two years, maybe three years. Just as Mutso was about to disappear entirely, the Georgian government made the decision to restore this historical fortified village. Mutso is built on three terraces. The only path, leading to the houses and towers, follows the 45 degree slope of the cliff. The first restorers appeared here in 2014. When I walked along this path for the first time, I realized that we were starting something crazy. How can I forget that day? I've never experienced such joy in my life. It was a miracle. One day you wake up and a company comes and says they're starting construction. The piles of disintegrated slabs were unsalvageable for construction. So the first thing the builders did was remove debris from the village. The construction of 14 meter high towers on a plot measuring only three or four square meters required special skill. The biggest challenge for the builders was the difficult terrain of the village. The mountain is terraced artificially, that's to say, in the place where they used to cut slate, that same slate was then used for construction. We didn't have the luxury of doing that, so we had to transport materials from elsewhere and then deliver them to the site. The method of construction was another challenge. From the very beginning, everybody understood that sand, cement, iron and water couldn't be used. Each stone has to be put on the wall without mortar and then stabilized so that it doesn't move. It means that each stone requires a lot of attention and effort so that tall towers, when they're built, will be stable enough to stand alone. All of these details have to be taken into consideration. The restoration of the last tower in Mutso has come to an end, and the first fruits of the rehabilitation work have already appeared. My brother Eldar Dayauri has also returned. The other, younger brother, has set up a guest house. Many more people will come. When there are tourists, people will come here and some of them will have guest houses. Others will have shops, cafes, and they'll have an income. After five years, one restoration project, which was started in 2014, has become a model of development, not just for Mutso, but for the entire region. Currently, only three families live in Mutso. 
However, the hydropower plant and communication infrastructure creates conditions for this once damaged, disrupted and ruined village to come back to life and be repopulated.